What is going on, all of my most valuable poets, and welcome back to my channel, and furthermore, welcome back to YouTube University, where we've been talking about self-publishing. This is for our third class now, so if you haven't seen the first two courses on self-publishing, please make sure that you do. The playlist for that will be in the comment down below. And we've been talking everything self-publishing, and today, we're actually going to talk to how to put that manuscript together. That's right, this video is going to be how to publish on KDP, and KDP is the platform on Amazon that publishes self-published material. KDP is especially great if you are low income or you want to turn this book out on a dime, because you could basically publish your book almost for free. And I say almost because there's a caveat halfway through the video where you're going to have to pay a little bit in order to make sure that your book is pristine and chef's poetry kiss ready for the world. So first off, you have to edit and get your book together. You gotta write that book and then you gotta edit that book. In my last course, I was talking about self-publishing and which editor you should hire for your book. Again, I will say it is important to get your work edited before it gets published. So you have your book written and there's a lot of content on my channel that would have helped you write your book or write those poems. You have the editing under control. Now what do you do? Now that you have your manuscript put together and you've edited it and it's ready, you're going to download it as a PDF because when you go to KDP, they're only going to take that in a PDF format. You also see in my poetry videos, I'm working on documents a lot. You don't have to use Microsoft Word to keep this free. I do suggest Google Docs, which I'm going to use for this video, the whole Google Suite system. Google Docs works a lot like Microsoft Word where you put everything together. There are only some things that Microsoft Word doesn't have that Google Docs does, but Google Docs is basically the Microsoft Word light and you can definitely get your book together using Google Docs. So now we're going to go to the KDP website. If you have an Amazon account, you do have a KDP account, which are both linked. As you can see right here, I already have mine signed up. So all you gotta do is just click sign in. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think if you never did KDP before, you have to just log in for the first time and then it's linked together. If not, it is no cost to you to sign up for the first time. What you're going to do is go to create new book and after that you're going to fill in all the information then they're going to ask you to upload that manuscript. That manuscript and file they're asking you to upload was the PDF I told you to download. Now over here they're going to ask you to upload a cover. That's going to be the cover of what your page is going to look like front and back and you'll see they'll ask for a rectangular image because they're going to put that rectangular image, they're going to scan it, then they're going to turn it in the binding stage, right? So that middle part's going to be your spine, that left is going to be the back, and that right is going to be the front cover of your book. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Of course, they're gonna tell you what specs you're supposed to use, and you're gonna type that into whatever program you're using to do this book, right? My book from KDP, Shadow Work for Poets, was done uh, in a cross between Photoshop and Procreate, which is a program you can buy on your iPad, right? Or any other kind of tablet. My wife actually Actually did the cover for me for this but you don't need to use Photoshop or Procreate because you got to pay for two of those things you can use Canva which is what I use for my thumbnails and Canva is free and I know some graphic designers on here as well like Jessica Fields the soft-spoken poet she uses Canva and she does really great graphic work so you could use that and you could experiment as long as you type those dimensions in. now I said rectangular because when we sent it in, it actually looked like this, right? So remember I said the middle was the spine and the middle was going to be that part that you fold and then the left side's going to be the back and the right side's going to be the front. That's just the visual aid. The same thing is done for published books, like this is my book, Every 1st and 15th, published by Digging Press. And they did the same thing. I actually think they did theirs in InDesign. And you could tell when something is done on InDesign because of the precision for some of it. Um, InDesign is just something that more professional folks use. And it's also included in the Adobe Suite. So if you have Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere Pro, InDesign is also one of those tools you can use, like the professionals. I will say that KDP does have its own cover tool. I didn't look into it too much. It looked kind of sketchy and it looked a little hard to navigate, but if anyone has had luck um, with KDP and their cover design, in the comments below, let me know because that could be a suggestion for other people watching this video. Okay, so you created your account, you input the information, you put the cover up and you downloaded the document. What you're going to do, and this is the most important, you're gonna press preview. Because what happens when you press preview, this big thing 
thing is going to pop up right here. It's going to be the actual image of the book. And when you are actually inputting the document into the PDF and you put it into the system, it's going to change things around because of the dimensions. Now, I am kind of working backwards. I didn't talk about that. On the KDP website, they do tell you what dimensions you should put your book in, right? And with the dimensions that you're supposed to put your book in, they actually give you templates to use in Microsoft Word or the Google document. Make sure that you use those templates because those templates are going to format the margins for you and it's going to change the way your book looks. For instance, a lot of you know I actually work at a publishing house as my day job um, and there was confusion with one of our authors when they sent in a manuscript that was 96 pages and we had to get it back down to about 70 pages. They sent an email one day to us because they saw that a book published by their pressmate actually when it was done was about 95 pages and they were like, hey, like what gives? But they forgot that when you take a manuscript what that's an eight and a half by 11 and you transfer it into a book the dimensions are going to change and the book is going to get a lot bigger right so that's something that you have to consider when you're going into your book too the format is going to change once you hit it in preview so really I literally have a note here that says preview 1,000 times because you're gonna keep looking at that digital copy of the book and you're gonna know that you're gonna have to keep making adjustments right so this is gonna be the annoying part of the process you're gonna have to keep uh, re-downloading your manuscript after you fix those adjustments in the preview until you feel like you have a pretty solid piece. Okay, after you preview all of that, now it's time to set your price. I have two rules of thumb when you're setting your price. Either set your price to sell or set your price that's comparable to other books of your niche online, right? So if it's a poetry book, look for comparable titles. They call these comp titles in the publishing world and put those at the same price. Um, if you want to put a price that is competitive, you can actually lower your price in order to predict the cost of getting more sales. Now, this is just on personal preference here because you know that when you are publishing on KDP, KDP is going to take a percentage. They're gonna take a percentage for print and they're going to take a percentage for distribution, actually taking that book, housing it, printing it, or sending it out. So use your discretion when setting your price. After this, you're going to want to see a copy of your book, right? Because there's going to be things you're going to catch when you actually see the book that you don't see in the digital space, right? I mentioned in my last video with my cover, it was hard to get that speaker around the barcode right. So I had to do that a couple of times because since it's a print on demand book, Everything about quality control isn't going to be the most profound, so some things are going to shift from print to print. So please make sure that you get what is an ARC, an advanced reader copy, or a proof copy, to make sure it looks good, right? You're going to find some things that are wrong with it when you get it in person. And actually, what I do, I actually take a pencil and I write inside where the mistakes are and then I go back into that digital copy again in that Word document or that Google Docs and I make sure that I change that. When you get your proof copy or your author's copy, it's going to come with something on the front that says not for resale, right? Just because this is one of those proof copies. To go back to what I said in the beginning of this video about there actually going to be a time where you're gonna to need to pay, this is the only time you're going to pay. And the difference between a proof copy or author copy and actual sold copies like you're purchasing books are that you're only paying for the shipping cost of it. You're not gonna pay for the retail price of the book. You're just gonna pay for the shipping cost of Amazon to get this to you. Okay, thank you, Kitty. So in this process, I only asked for two proof copies. The first time I found a lot of mistakes. The second one, I was actually gonna try to find mistakes for you all, but it's clean. And I think I actually gave away my first proof copy to someone else. So after that is done, you're going to get these, which are the final product, and you could actually press publish, and boom, your book is into the world. Now is where you get to start marketing. Um, you got, get to start telling people about your book. You get to start linking it to places. Um, I've even known some people that have self-published and went to their local Barnes and Nobles because you're able to get KDP books, Amazon books, into Barnes and Nobles upon request. Now, if anyone ever tries to tell you that you could pay X amount of dollars to try to get your work into a Barnes and Nobles or or an independent bookstore or another place like that, you're basically paying them to make the queries, right? You could make the queries yourself. You could reach out to your local places and say, hey, I would love to have a small reading and I would love to have my book in your stores. And then that's something you can work out. Some of the places are gonna say no, some of the places are gonna say yes, but I know from personal experience that booksellers are willing to work with people that are more local. In this YouTube University series, a follow-up video is going to talk about marketing and the do's and don'ts about some of this stuff. So please make sure that you hit 
hit that notification bell and wait for those videos specifically. Congrats, this has been a lot of work for those of you that are following me and I'm proud of you in whatever stage of the journey that you're at. It is important that we celebrate all these wins big and small and you even being on this video means that you're trying to put something in motion. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit on that notification bell to please feel this good poetic vibes and these self-publishing greatnesses and I will see you all in the next class.